Look here, folks. That shootout. <laughs> that shootout. Oh my God. It went completely, completely wrong. And Leon is just dug himself deeper and deeper into mess. Yo, folks, it's not Jerry Lucas here. We ready to break down episode four of uh Snowfall Expansion. And we'll talk about the title because like it's all the proof is in the pudding, but we have to go immediately to the shootout. Scene. To the shootout. <laughs> I forget the movie. I really forget the movie. It's a movie with a shootout and like the mother's holding the baby and she slowly turns around. It's a black movie. I can't yeah. remember on the top of my head. And she's like, no. You don't need to remember. You, like, you don't need to remember, man. You, I, our, our fans got us every time. They hey, start hey, funny. I, I know, know someone remembers about. that movie. I cannot remember the name yeah. of that movie on the I, I top of my head right now. Yeah. I tell you what, dude, Snowfall does a lot of like homages to like other things too. Like that oh, seems completely a parallel of what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it. I mean, look, folks, we immediately watched this. So, like, there's no prep, no nothing. We watched <laughs> it and we're ready to record it. So we didn't have to go research what it was and all that other good hey, stuff. It you just know, immediately oh, went to that moment for me. Immediately. Yeah. And I said, 100%. oh, because I'm not going to lie, I thought it was Sully in the back seat. Me too. Because they kind of briefly hair. showed somebody with hair. And yeah. I'm like, ah, they, this is going to be interesting. And man, that was a gut punch. Yeah. When you see that that was a little girl that he lit up. Yeah. Here's the thing. You're entirely right. And I thought the way they shot it was for it to do that. And it's completely parallel to yes. what, what Scully did earlier when he thought he saw Franklin. He said, oh, dude with a bush? That's got to be him. Leon wasn't a target. And no did he pull out Leon and Franklin's little breakup. But, you know, he assumes they're friends as he should. But he wasn't looking for him. He said, that dude looks like him. And he shot. And there was other casualties. Yeah, he shot, um, you know, uh, Wanda. Then he shot two other people who were just eating and, and whatnot. So, like, it's almost like an eye for eye. But it just goes to another level when there's mm -hmm. a kid involved. So, like... Man. That's where it was at for me. Like, and even the ice cream dude is like a, a innocent bystander. But like, now let me ask a, let me ask an important question from all hood movie classics that we know. Do you leave the mother alive, or do you got to take her, or do you got to go to? No, the, I mean real G's would have killed the mom because hey, that's, even that, but he's that's not, a witness. Yeah, and exactly, and he and that's the thing. Like we we know that he's a hothead. And mm -hmm. we know that he's trying to get his own uh, feet under him. But, like, Leon still has a really sensitive heart. We've seen it the entire well, clearly episode. Clearly, well, yeah. And, and, you know, this is another part of the eye where, like, he needs Franklin. Like, situations exactly. like this would have never been out. But it's, a, but it's you still... And then you got to blame Sully's men. You saw who it was. Why did you stop the shoot? Hey, you yo, that is that... In the car. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, and, and Scully's gonna be mad at that too. So, like, there's a lot that's gonna come from this last close. Who's the thing. little, is, is that his sister who was messing with Mad Boy? So, is that Mad Boy's daughter? Oh, it wasn't Mad Boy. Who introduced uh, Franklin to Sully? And I think it was Mad Boy, right? I'm, yeah. I'm blanking Ooh. right now. I if that's the case, that would be because he said, um, that's my. My baby mother's brother. Oh, I don't know. And again, like because I only watched it once, so and that I, was I, the I, introduction I, for Franklin to Sully was through a girl who was the baby mother of somebody, and I want to say it was Mad Boy. Yeah, I mean, folks, let us know in the comments again. I, I again, I, just, I am blanking right now, dude. This so episode that, caught me off guard. This ending really caught me off guard, so yeah. I'm blanking a lot. But I know Sully sister is with someone and had a child with someone that franklin knew and yeah. that's how they got and it it is man boy because then man boy walked franklin over there to meet him because franklin was looking for someone yeah else to expand with so oh my goodness if we play the angle that that is man boy's sister i mean that is uh sully's sister and that would mean that would be man boy's daughter we got a bigger issue altogether yeah and it went from them attempting to get it straight with both of them to get in this to you've just created two huge enemies. Yeah, true. 
I, I just want to real quick, real quickly say, folks, definitely let us know about your thoughts of this closing scene right now. And this this not the craziest beginning of a season period. This for four episodes in, and things are going down. I legitimately think this is the best start to any season. They're just so far. they're just not playing games. I think yeah. this is like straight line. They like nope. Yeah. We need to get to it. We understand what crack in the 80s is. Mm -hmm. So we need to stop glamorizing everything and show the real violence that happens. Mm -hmm. And this episode, beyond just the gunfire, you got to understand when I mean violence, I'm talking about the violence of some conversations that happened mm -hmm. in this episode. I mean, I can't wait till we get to Franklin, mother and father sitting at that table. And what she says to him is, man, it caught yeah. me completely off guard because it was as ruthless of a statement that anyone has made on this show. Yet, yet fitting. Yeah, yes. we'll, we'll get to that. But uh, I definitely want to say before we go any further, there was a comment last week um, of somebody saying that they feel like that, you know, this could be the last season of Snowfall on FX uh, for one, because of styling, nonetheless, but two, because that's the rumor that's out there. And just to quickly tap your brain about this, I, I, so I don't think this is the end of Snowfall, but I do think that potentially this could be the last of Snowball, Snowfall on FX. There's a lot of indications that FX entirely is not looking to be on Disney's radar, but Hulu is the savior moving forward with all. Now, could it be that, or could we be looking at FX being sold to someone else? Because I mean, it's content that really Disney can't use. Well, and, and that's the thing. It's 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 like Hulu, it, it, everything on FX is considered FX on Hulu. Nonetheless, FX originals are still FX material unless it's rebranded to being Hulu originals and then the releasing and everything has to be I done. I don't think they would do that because in the end, you still have the FX, FX channel. Right, like, and that's the question. What yeah. happens to the channel? But at the content, though, I think that, you know... I think the content could go extremely violent. I don't... Here's the weird part, and this is the part we really never discuss. There's literally nothing holding basic cable back from being HBO content. Nothing. At this point, there are no. no rules. It's just that they have done it. They They go far, but then they pull back a little bit. But at this point, why pull back at all? Yeah. They used so to show I'll... Nip Tuck on FX. If <laughs> anyone remembers what Nip Tuck was as yeah. a show, yeah, that that joke was crazy. So I, I don't I if it is the last season of Snowfall, I believe it would be more of a storyline aspect of it. Because we know the war didn't go on for that long. So what happens when the supply dries up? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't foresee this being the last season. Typically, last seasons are announced before the season drops. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, no reason to surprise you with a last season. But Especially if it is, but if it is the last season of it on FX, and if, if FX does stay FX, but Snowfall ends up becoming a Hulu original, then you know I can see that happening. And hopefully, they keep the creators still in their spot. Uh, but maybe that does allow the opportunity for the tone to be. Tweaked a little bit, although it doesn't need to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, what else could we do with the tone? Literally, if I, I, I ask this, anybody, I this, I this shows this. more more violent. This or power? No, no, no. I tell you this: the biggest, and 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 this is you know we'll, we'll cut it 100 percent right here. The biggest thing, an advantage that viewers can get by it going to Hulu no is without commercials. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all, if you watch this show, if you're watching on FX, you're getting blasted by commercials. The Hulu and the FX experience is completely different. It just, the, 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 the episodes feel so much flesh without those commercials. Because FX, I feel like, just do, the, the styling of the commercials are so abrupt that it, you don't <laughs> you see it coming. But it also, I feel like it also messes up certain scenes tone. And like there was one uh, obvious commercial because the scene changed, but mm -hmm. like just how it flowed, I was like, that's impressive as hell. It just it just made the story go around so good. And I just think that like the way how certain parts of this episode like plateaued, 
a commercial I can see like, damn, right now? Like, you know, especially with how important some of the dialogue was in this episode. But um, no, let's let's actually get into this now. So again, this is episode four, expansion. Um, there is obviously mm-hmm. like the proof is in the pudding. Franklin is trying to take things to the next level. Um, so he's just trying to expand at in the community with the black businesses, putting mm-hmm. power back into the community. But then at the same token, going back to read, like, hey, we need more product. I know you're over there doing your thing, but we need more because we need more to sell more. We're not slowing down despite all this that's happening with Mambo and, and Scully. We need more. He wants domination control, and he wants growth by any means necessary. And he's not slowing down. We'll talk about that in one second, but let's go to the top of this episode. We definitely yes. have to talk about Wanda out here hitting an all-time low on her crackheadness. Hey, 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 hey crackheads will sell you anything. <laughs> I've never heard it, of it, Anybody never from heard the hood it. knows a crackhead will attempt to sell you anything. And when she like, I got a two for sale. You know what? I had hope. I had real hope. <laughs> the last episode when she lost the tooth, she was looking into a mirror like, oh, man, I need to get off these drugs. These drugs are killing me. <laughs> Instead, she does a 360 on me and said, you know what? <laughs> this is a good-ass tooth. Let me see what I can get. <laughs> hey, hey, real talk. What's the street body for a tooth, bro? A crack tooth? <laughs> I mean, like that's the problem. It's a crack tooth. I mean, if, if it was like one it of those, got, it got fillings in it. So, like, what's the street value for that? What's she getting for that, bro? She getting, if, if some a, a dollar, a penny, a penny. I don't think you give a dollar. She need one of them loving hip uh, hip hop teeth to be out there. Maybe you would get something to get a rock. But yeah, man, it, it just again. I think this really depicts how controlling this drug was. Yeah, at one point in time, because it's not that anymore, but it was extremely controlling back then because how pure it was to be cut. That someone believes I can sell a tooth to get a rock, like that's crazy when you think about it. Yeah, but um, you know, immediately after that, you know, she peeped game and she saw Scully get ready to uh to uh, pull up and she yelled out the Leon. So, you know, regardless of how wild she may be, she's still coherent enough to know that a uh, drive-by is about to go down, that even some real gangsters wouldn't even hit. Now, it's interesting that Leon and them didn't see that coming, but man, uh, uh, but uh, Scully and them peep game. Uh, um, yeah. like, because even though, like, even though they were sitting down, they was looking at the girl, I think that form of awareness is still more key when you know that the streets is hot. Like he, well, is that it? Because I think uh, Sully was comfortable where he was at, though. I think he goes away from his neighborhood to be comfortable. Not a bad strategy. That's why they had to go. That's why they had to go get a profit. Investment. Look here, look here, <laughs> look, uh, and all, and the ghetto private investigator that got his mama working for him. <laughs> mama like at 10 o'clock i'm going on lunch He's like Wait, mama it was, we're still in the morning what you mean you're going on lunch <laughs> <laughs> but again, that at least shows that leon is thinking somewhat that you would think okay i can't find this dude let me hire a private investigator that can actually find him <laughs> yeah. yeah that's that man that joint is too far i couldn't stop laughing i was like for real for real but yeah, you know, nonetheless, he not playing no games out here. And he shot up everybody to thinking that, you know, that was Franklin, but it wasn't. Leon and the boys got shot up. But ultimately, look what happened. Now they both have the common issue with him, thus bringing back uh, Leon and Franklin. You know, I, I could have predicted this was going to happen, but... It's mm. still, I think it still needs to be fleshed out a little bit more. And I also like here's the thing: it became like an issue where they both had an issue here. Yeah, it's, it's very clear that Leon issue is much, much bigger now. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like I will go, I will go taller, but my hand might go off the screen. But like, but it, do you do you think right, because right. of Leon's actions that he's now dragged Franklin into it? Because clearly, I think everybody thinks those two are connected at the hip. One doesn't make the decision without the other. 
Yes. I mean, so he's I put mean, by him doing what he just did, what we just witnessed, he put Franklin even more in the line of fire. Well, also, I mean, I think that's why next episode is going to be crazy because we want to know how hot his Scully is going to react to the situation. Is he, yeah, he's not going to sit here and try to say who did it. He's automatically going to assume who did it. And he, he, matter of fact, he already knew what he did. So he knew a receipt was going to come. And he already thought that was Franklin. So he's going to automatically think Franklin was the one retaliating. Yep. The issue is here is that Leon created more issue for, for, for Franklin. Franklin's unaware of this as, as now trouble is definitely going to be looming his way. Who knows who his casualty is going to be. But it's at the same time, that also is an issue between the two of them because it's like, hey, whoa, whoa, you did what? And and now I, I mm. he can't reason with him. And and the wild card, like you said, man boy, who already because maybe that digs deeper on why uh Leon looked the way he did. Not just that he killed the kid. That he knew who that kid was. Yeah, yeah. I really want to look this up. I have to, I, I, I have yeah, to know. Yeah, like, I, I thought, and also too, I just thought that that scene, how it was shot with the sun rays and the the, the, the circular panning, very so, much a Soprano esque shot, especially with the uh, ice cream man coming up like that. It yeah. all it reminded me of. They didn't take it to classic black gangster films. That was way more of a classic mob gangster setup. Yeah. Like yeah. something from The Godfather you would get when you just see the slow move, like right when uh, Sonny was shot up, where yeah. you see the slow movingness happen and you see somebody in a way, and then all of a sudden they just let it go. Yeah. I'll say this really quickly too. Also, you know, Leon trying to keep Wanda um, in the hospital so that she can get clean. I mean, the love is there. We already said that. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, I think it's very evident to say that it's not just love, but that's also his weak spot. He yes. is most calm. It, like, he was trying to bargain everybody without no temper, which he usually shows when, you know, mm -hmm. something was he was just like... Exactly. He was like, what's up with the nurse? Like, he was just all chill about it. But, like, you know, I thought that, um, you know, her surviving... I thought was the right way to go yes. because I think there's still, we still need to kind of groom, like more or less kind of massage that relationship out a little bit more as other things are starting to escalate on the other end because they're both Clearly. in a situation. So like, <laughs> I, I'm glad that she survived. And I'm also glad that she survived in a way of us not speculating what happened. So mm -hmm. I really do like that. Um, I guess we talk about Paul Davis now. Now, you know, now that he has the bookstore and they're still trying to work business, there's not nothing much to make of this, which means that it's eventually coming. Him and Irene, yep. I think, are the two storylines that are still slowly growing throughout the season. We got a lot more Irene, uh, um, Irene this season, uh, this episode, but I think these are the two, you know, that we're both aware are there. But yes. Just a little bit more time on that. But I, I guess let's go back to Franklin again. The conversation with his mother. There it now, is. You, you said it last week about like the. Mm hmm. So like, I, I this, is, you. this was a great way to have a discussion on what's your end game. Yep. yep. And the mom pointedly like, I need to know when this is going to end. Like this has to be legitimate. And Franklin really not wanting to come to that decision yet. I think he was dragging his mom along, but I don't think he has it in game, as we clearly see later on in the episode when he talks about expanding. Like, he doesn't really see an end game yet. Yeah. And the mom is like, no, this needs to get legal and get legal fast. And I think that is going to eventually lead to the conflict between. Well, that we later on see an episode between the mother and the father that's really going to lead to the conflict between Franklin and his dad. Yeah. It's, it's just a very good, well shot conversation between them mm -hmm. two. From even from Franklin's language that he uses with his mom in that scene, or the slight standing over her as they're having that conversation, because that was a display of power to do something like that. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I loved every bit of that setup. Yeah, I think also, too, I think there is a, a lot of rebellion being shown mm -hmm. here because, I mean, his mom speaking the truth. 
Um, she's rational about things. It may it could be deemed as impulsive, but I think she's completely rational when it comes to her son and the yes. decisions that he's involved with. Yes. So it's crazy that you know, much like you said, the camera, you know, he has a conversation about wanting to put back into the community, <laughs> give black people opportunities to have. I mean, all this righteous talk that we heard up and down the board and so many different things, giving people opportunity to get loans. And you know, putting uh, power back into the people. Man, drug dealers is, sell make the best like entrepreneurs. It sounds so, good. It sounds <laughs> so. It's, it sounds so religious, and it you know the legit business. You know, are you running a legit business? Like, what you mean? We were just in the country club, blah 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 blah. I mean, hey, I that, that was a really, hell of a line. That was a yeah. hell of a line to say that we weren't in no crack house. We were just at a country club. That's a quick. That's equivalent of saying, understand what my business is bringing us and what doors is opening up. Don't well, try to rush me out of this. Also, I feel like that was like backpedaling because he was like the door almost mm -hmm. in the face, and he was like, "Oh well, you know, like you know." But it doesn't justify that your business is legit and your mom is aware of it. And like, I get it. Why? Why things are good? I feel like your mom turns a blind eye to everything he's doing. But that conversation, the seat at the at the table, the red table yes. talk they had. That <laughs> she, said red table talk. she brought she brought it to the table, and she was just oh, like, "Oh man, I hate you for way, that." One. This is <laughs> not a legit <laughs> business. <laughs> Hold on, which one was Willow? That's all I need to know. Which one was Willow? <laughs> <laughs> but look, at the same token, too. So, like, why are they having a conversation about legit business? And I'm like, all right, well, I guess he put into perspective that he needs to have an end game. Mm -hmm. Then he goes to have a talk with Reed, and he just like, so man, he flipped the shucks out of having an end game. <laughs> he like, man, what happened if we just double up? Like, <laughs> not only are we not talking about an end game. I'm talking about building a drug empire. Yeah. And that is, again, that's going to be the most interesting part of this. And also to go back to an earlier comment of yours, that's why I don't think we are at the end of it. As as he's talking, as you, you heard him talk about the sections that he can't go to, DC was one of them, shout out to DC, um, that he couldn't go to and, he, and him saying, well, go down to Little Rock yeah. and teach them how to make it. The point we're still in the phase of teaching people how to make crack. Yeah. Because we are extremely early yeah. in, into it. Yeah. The pandemic. I was about to say it and then I held back, but <laughs> it wasn't. Crack was the first pandemic for lots of people. Yeah. I think um I also think too that we would be remiss if we went any further without saying that this man, Franklin, he no one's warning this entire episode. His mom, Reed, uh, um, uh, why well, I can't think of his name right now. Um, why does it slip out of my head? Um, I was about to, I know who you're talking about. Lerp, Lerp one, another one. First uh -huh. of all, Lerp, Lerp said he wasn't even, he's not even about the game no more. He said he's out, which I was so, I think that might have been the biggest surprise for me this episode. It was like, yes. He legitimately said that. And it's the way he said it is what hits the hardest. Yeah. He's almost saying, I wasn't prepared for what this business could do. Like, yep, the blood and I, can't I can't live with this. Yeah. Like, that's deep to say something like that. Yeah. Like, legit said, like, the bloodshed was is too much for him. And I'm like, I, I guess I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming at all. But no. yeah, J Jerome and them, just like, yo, like, we got conflict on turf. I don't doing? think that's why I said it last episode. That ain't why Jerome was saying that. I think that relationship with Man Boy is way too close. Um, and I think he is still playing that card. Talking about, can I get back to my shop? Nigga, you know what business you in. Like, come on. We're not going to act like you bought that shop out of legal money. You did not. <laughs> you know what business you're in. But it yeah. brought me immediately back to conversation between him and Man Boy in the last episode. And again, with the auntie and how she could truly be Franklin's right hand. Yeah. Because she's the one like, no, we got a connection. She She's the one who's speaking intelligently about the drug game of saying, hey, we need to expand to little cities. Nothing major. Yeah. And build. That's a business move. Yeah. 
Yeah. She might as well have been Amazon. <laughs> and let's take over a small, a small city and flood them and then move on. Dude, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of foreshadowing in this episode. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, this is episode four. There's 10 episodes. And, that, you know, you think five is the peak, but like, four is feeling like we are. The, hey, the panel will be five's going to be crazy. Crazy. Because five is supposed to be like the break or whatever mm-hmm. happens. Even though I have not, I'm not going to lie to people, I've not watched the FX show past three episodes. Well, except for Pose. I was Pose about to say, it. what? Uh, you I know, Pose, you Pose is the best show on television for me. But, like, I haven't, Pose been, that was two years ago. Like, it's been a while, and I forget how FX shows build. And maybe five isn't a big explosive episode. Maybe they nah, bring nah, it nah, 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 I don't think there's no consistency in it because the Miracle Horror Story builds. No, like, just like, Miracle right. Horror Story would drop everything on the first episode and say, now deal with it. So, like, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I don't Horror, think it's like a that's, a, that's a whole different monster into itself. Yeah, I don't think it has a programming like tone like other networks do. Like, without a doubt, other yes. networks absolutely do, but I don't think they do. And I think that's why I like FS shows because they give so much power to their creatives, um, to the to the, to the creators that um, everything just feels different. And I think that what the network does for is they come in there with the publicity, the advertisement, the um, still still the promotion. best, still the best, 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 best. Uh, Comic Con experience I had <laughs> ever had. PR and team, yeah, FX I mean, they, 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 on a show that is unbelievable. Yeah, they, I think, and I think, man. and I think that's great. I think that's they keep everybody happy. Fans are happy. The aesthetics of everything. I mean, every every season of Snowfall graphics look amazing. Yes. American Horror Stories, uh, always sunny. Like all these shows, always got good things. And I think that's really the best part about these shows is that mm-hmm. they give so much power to the creators that if you like it, then you know you're going to get your money's worth. And I think that uh, this season four has just been so good. Man, this one, this, oh, I was going to say, just one thing we definitely got to talk about before we even wrap this up. And the, the it, well, two things. One, Gustavo kind of walking around with guilt. We're going to kind of see how that one goes. Hey, yes. He's up and down. He was like, chill. He was a, he was a stone cold killer. He got the job done. Now he's back like, Okay. Back to himself, which is I don't know a docile because, monster. Yeah, I think like, that's crazy. I think that's going to loom for more but, entertainment for us. <laughs> and just in case people were wondering, like, well, how could he go from the ups and downs? This is a very, to me, realistic show. His high was because of what happened. Yeah, yeah. Now, after you've gotten what you thought would make you feel better. You have to live with everything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now he's living with the death. And I love the point that they're playing it that way with him. Mm-hmm. Because little, a little known secret on this show, he's probably putting in the best performance on Snowfall. I would think so. Him or like, him or Teddy and Reed. Or, or Reed. Yeah. Teddy or like Reed. He, oh. his, his performances are amazing. That up and down aspect that we're getting, it's between him and the father for me so far. Yeah. Yeah, because the I, father, we didn't even talk about the father. Oh, we didn't get away without talking about the father. I'm bringing, I'm bringing it up right now. The reporter, we didn't talk about the reporter either. Yeah, I was just about to say, Alton, like, now here's the thing he's so chill when it comes down to him at work at the um, what about to say the nursing home at the uh shelter. <laughs> I, I like how we see how morally uh, I'm about to say compromised, but how morally put he is. Mm-hmm. In situations, Irene completely was out of line. Hey, he and, played the car and he pulled it immediately. She don't forgot he a black, uh, he a former Black Panther. You ain't gonna trick him that easily. Exactly, exactly. That's why I was just getting that. I love how they he didn't just. It wouldn't have made sense if he went black angry, but the yes. the, the, the the triggers was there. All day. I'm hey, pretty sure he's probably the moment she said wife, and he said, Wait a minute, how do you know I'm married? Yeah, <laughs> I ain't I ain't worn my wedding ring forever. Yeah, like and then it automatically put that okay. So you looked him up. Now he's automatically offended yep. because he know you're playing an angle on him. Mm-hmm. I love the point when we can have smart black characters that don't need to be angry. Yeah, because he was just matter of fact about it, not angry. He was just matter of fact, like, no, this ain't gonna work for me. Don't come and, back here with any of that. And it's funny that 
on the contrary, when Irene gets checked <laughs> for hey, her injury, she, she immediately out. got mad. <laughs> <laughs> but we now know that now she's collecting more and more information. She got mm-hmm. huge intel on Reed now, and now she's starting to put the pieces together, which ultimately creates more trouble for Franklin. <laughs> so that, means, that means her death will be coming by the end of this season. Because yeah. there ain't no way they can leave her alive at this point. Either, no, that no, or, no. either that or Franklin better go ahead and cop that mink, and that's a that's that's it for him. You <laughs> see him at one sporting event with a mink on. We already that's know it. where we're going. That's it. It's obvious. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to get to that point. I think it is going to get to the point of them realizing she needs to be dealt with. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. You're, you're digging too far. You're getting way too much information, and we can't have you get this information. I still believe Franklin's Day of Reckoning is going to come with his father. Yeah. And him having to face the truth of what he's doing to this community. And a point that he's talking about expanding now, eventually we're going to have to see the repercussions of what he's done to the LA area. Mm -hmm. And for him to realize it, we see it, but, and I think he realized some of it, but he doesn't fully understand everything. Not yet. Not yet. That would be too soon. We need more time with that. Yes. Yes. We'll see. He's still a kid technically. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think a lot is being put into perspective, but he's not grasping it, but he will. He will eventually. There's a lot coming at him from all angles. So he'll have to somehow, you know, open up his eyes to everything that's going on. And not to mention, while Teddy is uh, still down, you know, in Mexico, trying to put it all together with the residuals of all the things he's been through on his body, Uh he's looking rough. So we've seen him in a situation where we haven't really seen him, where he doesn't always have the plan. He doesn't have everything put together, so he has added pressure and also looming trouble from his from Irene coming. But I mean, he's, he's in the government, so he'll be protected. They ain't gonna make a difference. I mean, look, hey folks, guess what? The government's bringing in more drugs and they're starting more wars by putting guns into allies or against whatever the whatever the tactic may be. Hey, hey Jay Z, like, done, hey, Jay-Z told y'all years ago. Just listen, <laughs> man. Reagan so, made me into a monster. Like it's just, it's clear we know where the drugs came from and we yeah. understand why it why it happened now, again this is not uh make believe this is not conspiracy theories we literally have a movie called american made with tom cruise explaining how we flew in drugs in this country and that's a true story yeah <laughs> we funded yeah. that war with drugs yeah it's just that's- weird to now see it for people to fully understand that Maybe it wasn't the government that pushed crack, but boy, did they supply the necessary <laughs> amount of cocaine for crack to flourish. Yep, this is true. Well, folks, that would do it for us for our episode four review of season four of Snowfall Expansion. Jump in the comments, folks. Let us know what you thought about tonight's episode. I was crazy. I loved it. I know y'all are going to love it. Uh, and obviously, we'll be back each and every week covering um, every episode, breaking it all down, giving y'all that official thorough recap. So until next week, folks, y'all stay safe and, and uh, we'll see y'all then. Thank y'all for tuning in.